All right, thank you, Derek. The Federal Reserve's recent decisions leave investors wondering how it can help or hurt their wallets. Stuart Welch joins us with some answers from the Welch Group. Uh, Stuart, good to see you this morning. Good morning, Mark. Uh, people hear that a lot, the quantitative easing, QE3. Uh, people hear that and they say, hey, what's that mean for me? Help explain, first of all, what is quantitative easing? Well, I think most people's eyes kind of glaze over when they hear that. Uh, you know, in essence, it's uh, printing money. So the Fed goes in and, uh, you know, you think of them printing money out. They don't do that anymore. It's all electronic. But they're pushing more money. Uh, there's, they're pushing more money into the system. And in this case, quantitative easing, they're, they've committed to do $40 billion a month and they haven't given an end date. So it's, we call it quantitative easing unknown instead of quantitative easing number three. Uh, it's, we, we, and we talked a lot about this with John Norris yesterday about um, you know, its effects and it just mm -hmm. seems like a Band-Aid though. It's not, it's not gonna help a whole lot. Well, I think, uh, you know, my guess is that it is going to be a Band-Aid and I, you know, question whether it'll work or not. I'm very hopeful, like everybody else, that it will. I think what the Fed's trying to do is pump money into the system mm -hmm. and hope that it will uh, cause the economy to, to gain traction mm -hmm. uh, and you start to have the economy grow and then you can come back and solve the problem. But, you know, it's really tricky and I think, uh, uh, you know, it's a real challenge. All right, well, let's dive into how it helps the Joe Blow living out there in the public. Uh, you know, obviously, interest rates stay low. Uh, you got your money in savings. It's not going to help a whole lot. But how could this particular move help people here? Well, I think the, if you talk about winners and losers, the big losers are the savers, uh, and particularly retirees who are just, you know, looking at anemic returns. Uh, and so there, it, it promises to have lower and lower interest rates, keep interest rates really low for an extended future. So I think that's a big problem for them. The big winners, I think, are going to be people that are willing to invest in the stock market. Okay. Uh, and I think when you look at retirees in particular, it's gonna force them to reconsider taking part of their money that they wanted to have in, say, CDs and put it in the market. And my suggestion is, if you're gonna move into the market, move into the really conservative stocks, that's gonna be your big U.S. companies, mm -hmm. the blue chip companies, the ones that are paying dividends. Companies that you uh, you know about, right? Well, it'll be not. it'll be uh, the companies that you're buying products from every day. Whether it's a Kimberly Clark where you're right. buying toilet paper, or a Colgate where you're buying toothpaste, or an Exxon where you're buying uh, gasoline. All right. All right, Stuart Welch from the Welch Group. Uh, wish we had more time. Uh, well, he'll have more information on his website, thewelchgroup.com. Thank you so much. All right, more to come on this edition of a Good Day Alabama. Stick around at 7:20. Coming up, one doctor offers the, his five factors that determine aging. He explains his new book to help you slow down that aging process in your life. And JJ is going to bring the latest from the production.